Whew. It's been raining for the past like two freaking weeks. Here in Houston, it is towards the end of August here at the BioDude Houston. My name's Josh, I'm the owner and founder of the BioDude. This is my point of sale. You can come visit me Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And today, with my wonderful wolfhound and my other dogs around here somewhere, we are going to give you guys a full tour of the BioDude Houston. Uh, I'm really excited to show this to you because we've been doing a lot of work, bringing in a lot of different products as well as revamping the store. Oh, hi, Lucy. So when, when you guys come in here, you're almost always going to see my dogs. Uh, not only do they, pro not only is my building protected by the Second Amendment, it's also protected by my dogs. So if you come here, you're definitely going to see them, and they're definitely one going to give you kisses and everything. But I wanted to welcome you guys in, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a tour. So let's get started. So I guess we'll start over with the storefront because the bioactive room, that's going to be the last aspect. So as you know, I've been really diving into my craft for aquatics. So we started bringing in a small amount of aquatic products when it comes to live plants. So we have some Anubias down here that are already established onto the rock uh, with some of the bromeliad clips. So that way they should be completely good to go. And then we have a whole bunch of aquarium plants down here. Um, a whole bunch of uh, selection and we've been flying through these uh, which is really cool another new product that i've been offering here at the point of sale eventually i'll offer these online this is my uh, lava stone that i sell by the pound also known as pumice rock and then i take some of my tissue cultures and i put them on there and let them sit for about a month until the moss gets this nice beautiful covered green uh, you can see there's a little piece of the tissue culture that I neglected to take off. Boom. Look at that. It's beautiful. So we'll always have these at the BioDude Houston. A small rock like that, we usually sell for about 15 bucks. Uh, we completely renovated our plants over here. So now all of our plants are individually labeled, which is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. It's just one thing after another. Uh, you know, we have a lot, a lot of our taller firma plants up here, as well as are some of the more delicate type of flora and fauna plants down here. Uh, some of my favorite, favorites are the different peperomias and things like that. Over here, we have our, our selection of plants. So throughout the day, we are constantly stocking. Uh, because I can't, I can't do access to my greenhouse with my clients just yet, uh, we are constantly bringing stuff in from the greenhouse since we're only having two or three units each skew out. Then on top of that, we have to maintain the inventory for the website as our plant inventory continually changes. So it's, it's definitely a job, but we're improving every day. Uh, we have a whole bunch of beautiful bromeliads here. We have a whole bunch of the offsets right here. And we're really happy to offer all of these, which we really like them. Uh, they're easy to grow. They grow epiphytically. They can grow terrestrially if you really know what you're doing, but we don't recommend it. And then we also have a whole bunch of air plants here. Different Talanzias that do really, really good in different flora, fauna, firma, and Sahara, and Arrhenia setups, depending on what type of biome you're building. And then, of course, we have our larger plants over here. So, you know, we typically almost always have ficus trees, large Sanservias, Shefalera trees, large mother bromeliads. This is my favorite part of plant shipment is when we get uh, master cases that have eight of these per case and we'll get like 10 cases of mixed color bromeliads. It's my favorite because we get so many different types uh, and it's definitely rewarding. Uh, to put in your tanks and it's also a lot of fun to have that bright pop color in your tank uh, Over here. Uh, we have a lot of our tissue cultures and stuff. So we have eight different varieties of tissue cultures I'm soon going to be expanding that out to probably 20 or 30 different types uh, and I'm also working on uh, You know continually uh, Working on the packaging with when it comes to how we're displaying these as well as how they're being packaged for resale since these are being made in a local lab for BioDude's behalf. And then over here, we have some pre-builds that we have for sale. So you guys saw this YouTube video, I'm sure, 
uh, not that long ago. So this thing's been been developing really well. The fern looks droopy, but it's doing really well. It also has a bunch of new growth. We decided to add a, add a T T Rex in here because I think it's just awesome. Uh, the, we have a, a, a red Selaginella that's really taken over over here. A rabbit's foot fern that has a whole bunch of new growth, as well as let me see if I can move some of this. We have some beautiful Christmas moss that has completely taken over this rock, as well as Christmas uh, Christmas moss right here that is starting to grow in this petrified stone. This is just one of those simple rimless builds that I have uh, that I've been really enjoying to have. And then we have a lot of our pre-builds. So this is another one that I have for sale that, that if you guys remember the Last of Us build that I did, this is a, a mo another mossarium with a water feature waterfall. So this was all made out of the live sheet moss that we sell at thebiodo.com and the tissue cultures we sell at thebiodo.com. This is my Dragonstone right here. We got a, a, this is actually poplar, or sorry, not poplar, cra a crepe myrtle branch. And we have a whole bunch of duckweed. And you can see the moss is really just completely attached onto here. And now the waterfall has turned in more to a trickle, uh, which is just fine because, uh, you know, there are some critters that you could keep in here that need really high humidity that stay pretty small, especially since the lid is completely sealed on the top. And then we have a flora, Sahara, and firma build ready for sale, good to go, already seeded with bugs, everything. So as you guys come in here, so we completely redid everything. We have all of our isopods and springtails here on this shelf, as well as some of our different isopod and springtail diets, as well as the Zilla microhabitats. Uh, that's about all of Zillow that I carry. Uh, and then we have all of the leaf litter right here. So you know that uh, to expand our leaf litter and to do it right. And I'll get into that in my next video. Leaf litter is really tough to do it ethically uh, and to make sure it's clean. It's really, really hard. So we got all of our uh, different substrate lines up here. We've been doing really good as far as maintaining, uh, making sure and improving the batches as we go. I'm actually experimenting as we're really trying to cut back on the amount of peat moss we're using because uh, there is peat in these substrates. So we're really close to hopefully cutting that down exponentially. Come here, Dudu. So that way, uh, you know, we can continue to move in a positive direction. Uh, and then over here, this is where all of our rocks and woods and decorum and stuff is. So we got these nice little shelves right here. And I love rocks. And on my website, pretty soon, there's going to be a whole bunch of types of rocks by the pound. Soon there's going to be mountain stone, dragon rock. We have bone rock. And we have some petrified stone, tufa stone. We have black mountain stone. And we have my favorite, Sairu si stone. Now, this is like one of my favorite types of, of rocks to use when it comes to terrarium build, aquascape builds because there's so many different variances that you can get from it. Uh, and it just looks really good because it stands out. All of our rocks are sold here by the pound and we're really excited to get them onto the biodude.com. And then over here is all of our misting systems and everything like that. Uh, we do have the Exoterra monsoons, but we're always gonna push, push for Miss King. There's literally nobody better than Miss King. Um, I just wish I could get their products faster. Uh, then we got all of our different misters and a lot of our other exoterra decorative items in different water bowls. We're really looking at what's selling versus what hasn't been moving and starting to bring in other brands that we've been wanting to bring in and starting to eliminate some of the SKUs that don't sell so well. So that's what we've been really hitting hard this quarter. Uh, back here is all of our different tanks for sale. We have a full supply of crickets feeders, worms. We also offer cricket subscriptions, pretty much everything and everything that you need. Frozen rodents. We're waiting on our freezer to come in. Soon we're going to have a freezer right back there next to the tank build that also has a refrigerator. So we'll be able to offer more convenient fro frozen rodent purchasing as well as offer cold feeders, uh, such as m more commonly available wax worms, phoenix worms, things like, <clears throat> things like that. And then we go down here in the lighting as well as some of our other biodegradables like seed pods and nut pods. 
Like, remember I told you guys how I love the Sairu stone? I mean, look at this. So we do have really nice pieces. So I'll, this piece like this will go for about 35 bucks. So then over here, we also have a lot of our UVB and heat. So Arcadia has been pretty hard to get. Uh, Reptile Basics is doing such a good job at maintaining with how much of a pain in the rear end it is to bring in containers right now. But we're doing it. Hopefully we should have more Arcadia stocked here, but normally this is overflowing. For T8s, we carry the Exoterra brand, and for T5s, we carry Zoomed and Arcadia because it's literally the exact same manufacturer. Um, and then over here, we have the BioDudes T5 Solar Groves, my LEDs, and then we have Fluval's LEDs. So we're also gonna be bringing in uh, some of the other types of LEDs for the aquatic end, which I'll go over a little bit later, such as Twin Star, that goes with the rimless tanks. Uh, but as of right now, this is kind of what we're working with when it comes to the terrariums. We absolutely love the, these little nano LEDs because they plug into the app. And for the Mossarium over there, that's the, uh, that's the light that we're using. And then of course we have our mercury vapor bulbs, uh, which are very powerful and you must be very far away. I promise we'll get to the animals for sale. I promise. Uh, over here is all of our heating and lighting. Uh, so here we have all of our thermostats and under tank heaters and heat mats and domes, background supplies, breeding supplies and diets and filters and pumps for turtles. So. The, tur the filters we have here, these are more for much smaller enclosures, baby turtles. For You almost need a pond filter or a really good canister filter that can handle the waste a turtle creates, which I'll show you guys over there. Um, but, you know, I really like how everything is starting to flow. Uh, this was a lot of work getting all of this, you know, transferred over. We have our Reptibreezes over here, as well as the Exoterra screen cages. You know, uh, background supplies, we were finally able to source the black expanding foam. That stuff is so hard to find right now. And there's other things that you can use. You can use dry lock, you can use uh, spray acrylic, but you know, um, this is the method I know. And when I start testing others, then I can start implementing them here for sale. Over here is like, it, it's just an end cap with some chameleon specific products. We put the large, large fauniariums here because almost everybody needs to keep large crickets or large roaches on hand to gut load for their chameleon. So we always recommend having something like that. We don't like fake plants. I just want to put that out there. However, sometimes when you have a really uh, stressed out chameleon or a chameleon that is still trying to kind of get settled into its environment, and as your terrarium has younger plants that still need time to grow, Sometimes it's not a bad idea to put in some fake plants for the time being to make them feel more secure. They're cheap, they don't look terrible, but you know, that's not my gig. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a live plant type of dude. And then over here is our UN rack, as well as some of our filters. So you guys know I'm all about rimless. Um, I can't wait to show you guys my, my 120U at home, 114 gallon discus aquarium that I've been busting my butt on for the last 110 days. But we, uh, we got about 70% of our UN systems in. Uh, we got things from atomizers to their specialty nano lighting um, and to these awesome paludariums here. And we're actually gonna have both sizes. What's really great is they're already fitted for their bulkheads right here. And then you use this canister filter. So I have been trying, I've, I've been trying to rack my head around what I wanna do with this. I'm trying to find a mud skipper. And I, so that way I can build a brackish water pa complete paludarium base for a mud skipper in here that's powered by this canister filter. And having a salt water or brackish water with live plants, I'm ready for the challenge. So I'm really excited to, to try that. But I can't tell you how excited I am to carry, to carry Altum Nature and all of their stuff. It's been something I've wanted to do for a really, really long time. And I can tell you, I have just as much fun building tanks for animals as I do building display tanks just for me. And that's where I want to go over here. So if you guys remember this, this is the 60 centimeter that I built uh, about four months ago. I love it. It's doing great. So as you know, we're running the UN Atomizer, ADA rocks and ADA sand. This is the La Plata sand, which we'll be having very soon. 
if you guys remember how little the moss was. It was literally a patch the size of a quarter that was put on here. Now, if you come over here, you can see that the moss has completely spread adhered to the rocks and our stuff is growing like a weed. Some of the more gravias and other things I put up here, I ended up taking out because we were having trouble on Saturday evening to Sunday night. Since this thing isn't on an automatic misting uh, timer yet, uh, we were having issues with the plants, the epiphytes up here with the moss drying out. So then we tried using some of the tear tape and that just didn't work as well as I wanted. Uh, so we ended up taking them out and putting them in other builds. But this, I had so much fun building. It looks awesome. And these are the LEDs that I was talking about. These are the twin star LEDs that fit flushly right on the top of this rimless. And for those of you that are gonna be asking, we do sell the stands, we do sell every size tank, and soon we're gonna have lids for each and every of the smaller UNs. So that way, if you decide to wanna keep a, a reptile in here that doesn't need UVB, that can stand very high humidity, almost at all the time, like a dart frog, as long as there's some sort of ventilation, they can't get out, you know, you we have complete glass lids that you can put over this uh, to really help your escape come to life if that's what you desire and then of course we got all the filter components we re we just redid arm and body with a bunch of these 307s uh for snapping turtle painted turtle red ear slider and alligators and we're running a super heavy duty pump that pumps the water into the filter gravity takes it back out exactly the way we did the cinnamons and it has been great so I know you guys are ready, ready to see the bioactive room, but the last thing I gotta share with you is the animals for sale. So right now, all of our animals are captive bred. Our animals will almost always be captive bred unless we say otherwise. All of our animals go through a two week quarantine period, which means if they're snakes, we get two good feedings out of them of frozen thawed. If it's an amphibian, it's free of chytrid and rana. If, if making sure it's eating and shedding, if it is a lizard, it sheds appropriately if shedding time comes. We're hydrated and we're eating appropriately and we're not showing any signs of musculoskeletal distress. So without further ado, these are the, they're called Terraplexes. So Exoterra mass produces these more for the Europe market than the American market, but we absolutely love having them here. So we do have a lot of different, uh, different types of critters here. We have two different types of, uh, two different enclosures of crested geckos, uh, just because we go through so many cresties. Uh, people, love, people love having them coming in here. We got uh, some white tree frogs, some gold dust day gecko, and we got this beautiful captive bred dude. He just up and scared away when I pointed at him. And then we have a, a smaller Felsuma grandis in here. He's still pretty young. But if we don't sell him within a month, he'll have to be upgraded into an 18, 18, 24. All of these tanks are built to how we want our customers to keep them. So that way they also have a visual aid of you know, what they're doing so they can make an educated decision. Um, as well as lifting, listing how hard they are to keep, what their husbandry parameters are. Um, and then from there we can kind of set up a budget. Um, we got some beautiful green and black eroticas, some azurious morning geckos, and then we got the mossy frogs, which eh, he's actually out. So I'm going to open this up so that way we can get a really good look at this guy. We had a good, a large amount of these, um, and it's uh, absolutely amazing that we still have him because for me, I wanted to snatch this guy up myself, but we are out of space. You know, pretty standard stuff. And we have some captive bred Amazon tree boas, a captive bred here at the Bio Dude Black Tree Skinks, which is really cool. Uh, captive bred oscillated skinks. Uh, and then we have a, a, a yellow belly uh, ball python male. We also have inverts, uh, gopher snake. We, I mean, I, I can just keep going down this whole aisle, but what I really want to show you guys is this little nugget over here. 
And you notice this big hibiscus flower. So we actually have some hibiscus out the back of BioDude that we just go and pull the flowers whenever it's like necessary to give to these guys. And I'm surprised he hasn't nibbled this down just yet. Let me find the little bundle of joy. Okay, so you notice we got a couple empty cages. It's mainly just because our quarantine room right now has a good amount of critters in there. Uh, we do have some larger leopard geckos, a tomato frog, a milk snake. We got some cathay bread bearded dragons in here. I get it. This is a pretty small enclosure. We never have beardies. We have our beardies in quarantine for two weeks. That whole group will be gone in a week. And we only carry beardies at very specific time of the year. We don't buy off-season babies because we just we don't want to set our customers up for failure. Uh, and then, you know, a whole bunch of different king snakes and milk snakes and everything like that. So we absolutely, I absolutely love this wall because I'm having a bad day. You know, sometimes I can just come in here because our inventory changes somewhat frequently. So sometimes I get a little taste of a critter I've always wanted to have in my personal collection, but I can't. So I can come over here and maybe hold them for a little bit. And last but not least, I want to show you the tarantulas. So over here, this is where like we keep some of our other fun stuff. I found this online and I thought it was the funniest thing ever. So I totally had to put that here um, and, and you know light it up. Uh, and then we have a whole bunch of tarantulas here. Different life stages uh, from pink toes to Mexican red rumps to green bottle blues to Indian ornamentals. We have a whole bunch of really cool ones. Um, and we normally package them in these types of containers. These are the AMAC containers. Um, and I would love to be able to be like, this is where this guy is, but he's, a, he's only the size of a sling. So, oh, here's an Antilles pink toe. Pretty cool. And then we have a Mexican fire leg. Oh, yeah, we have a green bottle blue. Oh, he's right there at the very top. That's pretty awesome. Okay. I know you guys want to see the bioactive room. That's the whole reason I'm doing this video. Let's do it. Now, I've been really working on this room, trying to streamline it to be more flow as well as appeal. So I'm sure you guys remember this build. This is the for my Cuban night and Knowles. And you can, I built this a couple months ago. And now I think you guys can see how it's doing. Everything in here is thriving. And I mean everything from the from the anoles to the plants. And we even got it, we even pulled a couple eggs out of here, which is great news. Uh, because when they were in their 36, 18, 36s, we really weren't seeing the eggs uh, because they were burying them in the middle. But for some reason, they've been burying them towards the sides of the enclosure, so we're able to find them. So we actually do have a couple eggs in the incubator right now. We have this bad boy hooked up with four Miss King nozzles, its own Miss King unit. Uh, and pretty soon we're going to have a fogger on here, uh, you know, because it add a little bit more of a depth to it. But again, this is the, the, the custom enclosure uh, that we're trying to, you know, potentially offer on the commercial market. And we're really excited to continue to grow these and share them with you. Uh, over here, we have our three-legged blue tongue skink, Lieutenant Dan. So uh, his enclosure is doing wonderful. I'm also sure, I'm, I hope you guys remember building this with Mariah. We did this enclosure months and months and months ago. And I'm gonna sure, I'm gonna get him out. You hear him huffing and puffing, blow your house down. So my wife removed his leg a while ago and you can see how well he's doing with his little nubbins but Dan it Dan is definitely a favorite here he's almost always out he eats pretty much anything and everything that that we want to give him as well as uh, he's does decent at being handled and messed with the live moss we have in here is thriving as well as all the plants I don't know if you guys remember this Dracenia compacta in here was only this tall the Sheffalera in here was only a four inch pot plant. This Aglonemia in here was a two inch pot plant. And then over here, sorry about the noise, we have 
I'm sure you guys remember this and this. So almost the only plants that we lost here was the ones up at the front. We've been having to trim this one back, but overall it's doing extremely well. Uh, we're running two 50, we're running one 50 watt halogen. And that's given him under this piece of slate here. It's pretty warm, a really nice hot spot that he is loving with that really high ambient humidity. Okay. Oh, we got Nugget over here. So Taylor, thank you so much. So this is a captive bred Euromastix. Now we've had this almost for about two months now and I don't see how. He eats flowers. He eats seeds, he eats anything you give him. He's not afraid really of anybody, and he is the cutest thing here. He, I, I, I am, I'm comfortable enough to say that he's cuter than my wolfhound. I mean, look, look at this face. Just look at this face. So we've been calling him Nugget, and I gotta be honest with you, if Nugget is still here, uh, and you know, if he, if he puts up another couple inches and he's still here, Nugget will probably find a permanent home here at the Bio Dude to be part of the outreach program uh, that, uh, that, that we do for small kids. And then I'm sure you guys remember Smithers' enclosure. I love Mr. Smithers. And I'm really hoping to find a female for him because I do want to breed him, as well as a lot of my other animals in this room uh, that I've been working towards breeding. And I just want to say he hasn't eaten in two weeks because we feed him every two weeks. So Mr. Smithers right now is hungry, but, yep. So I'm gonna kinda let him just chill there just for a little bit, and I'm gonna try to get him out a little bit earlier, or a little bit later once he kinda knows what's going on. I, if you guys also remember this build, the only thing that we've replaced in this entire enclosure is this moss, because he kept knocking it down um, and then smooshing it. So what we ended up doing was putting some AAA spag underneath um, and then really pressed it down and guess when that solidified, it's keeping it attached to the wood a lot more effectively. We're running a Arcadia 6% UVB, a, a, a BioDude plant light solar grow, as well as two, Ar two halogen 50 watt bulbs in here. Uh, and he is thriving and he's doing great. The plants are thriving and doing great. This is one of my favorite enclosures in here for one of my favorite animals in my showroom. And that to me is what it's all about. Hey Smithers. So I can't tell you how many lives this snake has enriched that are young, including mine. I'm really lucky to have him. He's such a good snake, he's docile. He doesn't really bite when, unless you really, 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 really want that to happen to you. Um, and honestly, he uses every inch of this enclosure, every inch of this enclosure. And my goal is to give him something even larger. We just gotta, we just gotta hope for that day when that day comes. Because if you guys can see, I'm already out of space. Because today is all about the bioactive room. Uh, and if you guys know, this enclosure is old. This substrate in here is old, old, old. And there is so much cleanup crew in here. We lift up a log and just prosimiuses just pour out of it. It's freaking awesome. So then over here, we have our corn snakes. So I had a lot of people asking me about this. Why do you keep your corns together? Look, I know you're not supposed to keep colubrids together. You're generally not supposed to keep snakes together. These snakes have been together forever, literally forever. They each have their own respective burrows um, and, they, and they each eat each week, well, every other week, excuse me, and they, and they have full sheds. We watch it really, really closely just to make sure. So this is fierce right here, as you can see. Boop. He typically does have a little bit of an attitude and Nagini's creeping out back here too, as you can see. So you notice how I opened the cage and both of them almost immediately start to come out. This is a bond that I've been nurturing for an extremely long time with these guys and that, hence why I'm comfortable keeping them together because I'm so familiar with them. I'm familiar with if she's stressed out what her behavior is and that also goes for fierce. Now they have bred a couple times but she's never laid eggs for me that I've found which some people say well that could be from stress but she's never like actually developed the eggs. So we just don't know. 
um, because she's a very tiny corn snake for her size. But this enclosure is doing extremely well. People tell me all the time, why do you sell ferns, Bio Dude? You can't keep ferns in your enclosure. Well, we got a really good looking Korean rock fern right here. We got a lemon button fern right here. And we got another rabbit's foot fern right here that seems to be doing okay. We did replace this one back here with a hedgehog aloe, but for the most part, everything's being real good. And that nice piece of dragonstone right here, let me tell you, reptiles and rocks, it is a match made in heaven. They love it. Love, love, love it. Okay. So this enclosure here is actually going to be for children's pythons. So I'm going to probably do this build in another week or so. It's got to have time, man. Uh, we're going to be rocking a 6% a T8 in here because these guys like to get really close and I'm not trying to give them a T5 inside here because this is going to be too much. And then we're also going to be running a heat dome cage cover with probably a 40 watt bulb to give us that nice 92 degree hot spot with the ambient humidity of right around 55%. All right, Emerald Tree Skinks, group number one. So the last time you guys saw this enclosure is when I was on Chameleon Academy's podcast. Um, and nothing's changed. We still interact with this group on a daily basis. They still want to know what we're doing and they are still breeding. Um, as you can see, come here, there's a baby. There's literally a baby that just hatched right there. That just showed up in the dirt. That's what I'm getting at. This is why keeping your animals like this is the only freaking way to go. It really is because you get their natural instincts. They can act as if they would in the wild, form their own hierarchies, and then boom, you wake up in the morning and there's a baby lizard in your enclosure. Come here, dude. Hey, Taylor. Come here. So look how little and cute we are, and we're really, really scared. It's finally their season again. Yep, it is finally their season again. So you can see him. He is probably under four. He's probably just the absorbed his there. yolk. Yeah, so we are idle biddles. So I'm going to have you take this little guy here. Here we go. And we're going to get him set up in the quarantine room. And once we have a group of at least three that can be sold together, you'll be, if you're on the waiting list, we'll call you because the waiting list is about a year out right now. Um, and you can see our group right here. Oh, hey, Beefy. Come here, Beefy. Oh, my goodness. They just slither and slide right on through everything. Oh, come here. Nope. Like, I don't know. So this ficus tree in here, it's literally trying to grow through the screen. And it literally has attached to the screen. So we got to, you know, look at that. This Shefalera is also starting to attach. Uh, we do have a fiddle leaf fig right here in some pothos. UVB, LED, heat, Miss King. Deep, deep substrate. I can't tell you how old this substrate is. It's, it's really long. Everybody always asks me why, why we're expensive. I gotta be honest with you, we're cheaper than all the other, pretty much everybody else when it comes to the price of the products. We just don't have that free shipping label on it just yet, but we're getting there. Over here, we have our Chinese gliding frogs. Now I've had this group for a very long time, at least eight years. I purchased them from Sean Harrington of the Frog Whisperer. Um, and I, I got them to breed once, um, but I lost all the tadpoles about two to three days later. I don't know if it was from parents not giving them enough to live. I don't know if it was my water quality because it was RO water remineralized. And I, I don't know, but I hope to try again here soon uh, to continually, you know, hopefully have captive bred of these frogs because they are amazing. And this is another animal that I hope to get a larger enclosure for here very soon. Down here, we have our breeding pair of backwees dart frogs. These guys have been breeding for us forever. Um, and you can actually see them. They're both literally courting right now. So uh, you can see the female and the, the females in the back of the male. She is currently stroking his back. So hopefully we're going to have, I know, right? I know, I know. <laughs> I know, it's okay. So hopefully we're going to have more backwees eggs. So what's really cool about this Tinctorius species is they are the smallest locality of Tinctoriuses that you can find. 
And this tank is so overgrown that I like seriously just need to come in here and do a trimming because I gotta be honest with you, it's probably, there's probably babies in here. We just haven't, we just haven't found them yet. Um, but look at how well this is doing. And this is on my Terraflora, by the way, with a hydro grow drainage layer. And there's a bulkhead put into the back that we manually drain uh, every couple weeks. We got a peperomia growing in here, lots of bromeliads, creeping fig, live moss, everything that you could want, it just needs trimmed. It needs trimmed very badly. But it just goes to show you that you got a nice little healthy tent going in here. And then over here, we have a very small community tank of the North American species. So you guys know uh, my plants, once in a while, we'll have hitchhikers come in off the 18-wheeler when they're delivered. And there are almost always green tree frogs or green anoles. So when we are not able to give them to Armin Bayou to relocate them, you know, we, uh, we got a total of three green tree frogs in here and two green anoles in here that are living in harmony. And yes, these are the same ones that used to live with the corn snakes. And yes, they're all alive. And yes, they're still doing great. And yes, look how big, fat, and healthy we are. I love green tree frogs. They're super underappreciated and they make great pets. They're smart. They are easy to take care of. And by God, are they very pretty. I love it. So then we have my Brazilian galley wasp enclosure now. This one has been more of a work in progress because these guys are live bearers and they just reached their four year mark. So they should be good to go this season. So I'm really, really, really hoping that they breed for me. They do spend the majority of their time up in the trees. Uh, but right now, uh, when they're not up in the trees, they have a whole dense network of tunnels throughout this firma. And that's where they're all at right now. So I apologize. Over here, uh, we have our wonderful Borneo eared frog enclosure. So I've been breeding these guys for a long time. They're literally the, even the easiest frogs that you can freaking breed. Um, you know, moving water, broad leaves, at least, at least one female to two males and, and give them a, a misting cycle and you're good to go. We have monsteras, philodendrons. We are running a big pump that is pumping the water right here that pumps it into the tube. Water comes out of the tube and just cycles through. We don't have any fish in here. One tadpoles come, fall in here. We'll pull the rocks out, raise the tadpoles, sell the froglets. Right. So here we go. Notice how I'm wearing gloves. You all, when you're messing with amphibians, you always want to wear gloves. They look like something out of Jurassic Park, man. I mean, look at this thing. Their eyes bulge out. They got little crests. They got little zebra stripes on their on the back of their legs not to mention they are very easy to keep the males don't have a very loud call and they're just very rewarding pets let me see if i can find a female huh. hey baby there she is now there's a whole bunch of bugs in this enclosure there is earwigs there is roaches there is dwarf white and dwarf purple isopods. A whole bunch of stuff. Because we feed them roaches once in a while and then they just escape and then they burrow into the dirt and then that's it. Down here we have oscillated skinks. Uh, you guys saw this group. I've had this group forever. I got them again from the, from the same place I got the, the, the Brazilian galley wasps. You can actually see two of them barely sticking their little fat heads up over here, as well as what Christina's showing you guys now. Long, slender, hot dog-like, fat little creatures. That is what oscillated skinks are. They are live bearers from Greece. They are an amazing little critter to have, and they are great terrarium subjects. This Sahara in here is, this is actually a prototype Terra Sahara. So during my consistent quest to make my substrates better, as we continue to grow and everything else. This is one of my prototypes. It's been in here for two years now. And as you can see, I'm pretty happy with the results. Okay. This is a Fluval, a Fluval Spec V, so a little, a little five gallon. I just wanted, I wanted something to cover up the canister filter that powers this tank over here. 
So we put this piece of cork up. You can see the tubes coming out. I put some bromeliads mounted on here. We got a bonsai chefalera going on a piece of pumice, which I love. We drilled it, put the root stems in there, and then just takes care of the rest. And then I just put a simple manzanita branch coming out of the water. We got some cardinal tetras in there doing the thing. And that is, I want to say this is bone stone, but I could be mistaken. But complete, you know, as the aquariums would call it, nit nitrogen cycle is good to go. So this tank's been, you know, thriving. Up here, this tank is my cinnamon tree frog enclosure with a 100% fully aquatic base. In this enclosure, we have a group of white cloud minnows. We have a group of hammerhead, uh, hammerheads, blah, hatchet fish. We have two loaches, uh, and we also have uh, a couple, I think a couple of Neoricardia shrimp, but I haven't seen them in a while. Um, you can actually see some of the white cloud minnows swimming around here. Hopefully the glare isn't too, let me move out of the way. We're still trying to figure out how to properly film aquariums. It's not easy. Um, and then I got to be careful because we got this guy up here. We really need to sell some of these because there's well over 80 in here. At least they just keep breeding and breeding and breeding and they don't stop. Uh, you can see a big group right here and you can actually see the female right here is full of eggs. Uh, you can see this guy right here. And I actually love these guys because they're literally transparent on their base. Um, and they are a Thelioderma species now. So, so like your corticales uh, and your, uh, you know, some of your other species, they like, they love water. They love water, they love cork tubes, and they like going in and out of the water as they please. But most importantly, they like the water to be clean. So this tank is powered by a very large canister filter. Uh, that is, like I said, behind here. We have a pump behind all of this stuff here that's easy for us to access that's about this big. It does about 350 gallons per hour. There is 19 gallons of water in here, the 20 gallons of water. So we're doing way over the thing as well, way over the required, as well as offering mechanical, biological, and chemical filtration on all three stages of the canister filter. The filter pumps it up through this tube right here on the top left, pushes it down into the filter. Gravity pushes it through the filter and back out through this right here, back into the tank, through this big cork tube, out into the thing, as well as with a full custom background. Um, you know, we had this, uh, you know, I I'm have gonna have this tank for a little bit longer, but once I figure out what to do with the massive population of these, I might do something, you know, a little bit different while still keeping these guys. Um, but I, I love this enclosure. Uh, and then down here, we have my children's pythons. So now their season, technically, we were supposed to cycle them um, a couple months ago and turn up the heat now. Uh, but we didn't do that because I wanted them to, you know, age for a little bit more. Uh, so next year, I do hope to breed them. Um, in the in the aspect uh, that we actually like get eggs and all that good stuff. So, but since we didn't cycle them, I'm really not expecting us to uh, have any breeding success this year, as much as I would have loved to. So, this is a 75 gallon. So children's pythons. This one, I love this one. Super super feisty. Yeah, you can bite me all you want. I'm not doing nothing. So. We have a group of four. So again, these guys, they all four of them eat each week. There's two different basking zones. We're running UVB and full spectrum lighting. Look at that grip. I absolutely love children's pythons. The Anateresia genus has always fascinated me. Um, and I absolutely love the fact that they're so little and they have such an attitude I love it. It's ironic they're called children's pythons because people are like, oh, they must be great for kids. And I always be like, mm -hmm. I can't wait to breed them and have a bunch of little angry monsters. And then, and then look over here. We got, we got another larger one here. I believe this is one of my girls. I'd have to look at the, I'd have to look at the iPad and see um, because we have them identified in there. But just to put it into perspective, gorgeous. 
the, 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 the very fine spotting here at the top. Not so wide base on the head, but nice and thick and plump here. So we might have. And then, as you can see, my current situation right here. So I think what I'm going to do, let us continue. So over here, we have our, my Last of Us, my Last of Us Mossarium. So I don't know if you guys remember what this looked like before. This thing has completely overgrown. Okay. This thing has completely overgrown to the point when we like just really, really need to trim it. Um, I love it though. It looks freaking awesome. So we got, we got the abandoned building over here and you can see a lot of the moss cultures or the moss has really taken over. We have the, we have the Selaginello. You can see the, 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 the Cordyceps infected still lounging within the moss here. My favorite is the bloater. Do you guys remember the bloaters from that game? They were these big, big dudes that just completely ruined your day. So um, I like that he's just sitting there in the moss corner. And then of course, if you guys remember the tiny cars in here, they've literally just been engulfed and taken over. I don't even know if they're still in here. If they, oh wait, right here. Yeah, there it is. You can see a little bit of blue. That's literally it. And then you can, all, I mean, just look at this. This is freaking awesome. I love it. So, over here, we have my group of my white tree frogs. So this tank has gotten a lot of makeovers in its time, um, but it's doing wonderful. This is another species of frog that I've been breeding for years. Um, I haven't been really breeding these guys because I don't have the space. Like they take up so much room. Like they take up so much room. Uh, that I just haven't wanted to do it. But I might do it next year because we have a lot of good things in the book. So my group of dumpies is in here. Uh, we do have a group of males and females. And then we do also uh, have like different colors. So we have blue ones. We have snowflake ones. We have the honey-eyed ones and the whole, all those other, um, all those other good ones here. I want to show you guys the fat tails because this is my number one requested update video is my fat tail gecko enclosure. So right here is my African fat tail gecko enclosure. If you guys remember this, I loved it. This is how it is now. Absolutely nothing's changed. The plants are the same. Nothing's been pulled out. Nothing's been replaced. I mean, full base layer of firma, everything. So here is my one big male, big beefy. He is the only male in this group. He is a good looking critter. And this is another critter that we have on our list that we're hoping to start producing next year. Um, you can see he has most of his fingers in his toes, um, but I did get him from a guy, bought a big group of them actually, but unfortunately they didn't come from the best situation. So I did lose two of them, even though they went to the vet and uh, were wormed and put on a whole bunch of meds, but we just couldn't get them better, which was really unfortunate. But I mean, look at this guy. He's so freaking cute. So, you know, you can come and see these guys here at the BioDude too, just like all the other critters here. Get this locked up. And then last but not least, it's the Aki enclosure. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember me building this with Zach about two years ago. Guys, same substrate. The only thing that we've done different is added in some some wheat grass, which literally dead, but that's really what we wanted. You can see big girl sticking her head out right here. Uh, let me get this open. So that way we can get a good look at her. She has been so much fun. She eats literally anything and everything that, uh, that we give to her. What's going on, baby? It is hot in here. How are you doing? I know. And that was it. That's, that's all we're going to get. But as you can see, this enclosure is thriving. I mean, we love it. They seem to, they seem to love it. And, and you can even see down here, there's a whole open space that is an underground den right here. That is literally eight inches under all of this weight. And the Sahara is still holding that burrow. I stand by my products, guys.
I guess this is kind of where I'm, I'm going to leave you guys. Um, whenever you guys come by, make sure you, you say hello to Patty and Lucy. Make sure you ask to hold the children's pythons. I mean, seriously. I mean, it's great. I really appreciate all of you. It's been such a journey. I love that I get to do what I love every day, and I love that I'm constantly challenged every day to, to be better, as well as to make sure that we are maintaining the highest possible standard of care and ethics as we continue to grow. Thank you guys so much. My name's Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Come here to my store, The Bio Dude Houston, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. extended hours, woo! Do the bides.